Welcome back. You're listening to Get Real with Bob and Stacy. Real people, real issues, and real estate. We're joined by phone by special guest and best-selling author Steve Manchester. Welcome to the show, Steve. Thank you so much, Bob. I appreciate it. So I want to give you, everybody listening, an update about Stephen. We had him on our show not too long ago. He was working on a book, and we're excited to say that his book is being released today. Uh, Stephen Manchester is the author of four number one bestsellers. They are 12 Months, The Rockin' Chair, Pressed Pennies, and Gooseberry Island. His long-anticipated novel, The Changing Season, goes on sale today. Steve is also the author of an award-winning novel, Good Night, Brian. He has a Christmas, he has written A Christmas Wish, a Kindle exclusive, Wilbur Avenue, a novelette, and Just in Time, also a novelette, and The Thursday Night Club, a novella. While his work has appeared on NBC's Today Show, CBS's The Early Show, CNN's American Morning, and BET's Nightly News, three of Stephen's short stories were selected 101 best for chicken soup for the soul series and he is the produced playwright of three shoe boxes when not spending time with his beautiful wife paula or their four children this massachusetts author is promoting his works or it sounds like you're always writing when are you not writing Stephen? <laughs> i mean that's a that's lot of I books that's crazy <laughs> like how many hours a day do you write um I actually write a couple hours a day, uh, you know, when the kids go to sleep and, you know, the, the house is quiet. I, I spend time during the day. I have I commute up to Boston um, from Somerset, so it's like a basically like a 60-mile ride, you know, one way. So I spend some time, you know, in the car doing that. Um, and then when I get home, I, I'll do quite a bit of the writing. But I don't watch a lot of reality TV, so I spend my time, you know, on the laptop when, when the family's down for the night. So tell us a little bit about your background. I uh, I actually grew up in Westport, uh, Massachusetts, you know, Horseback Beach and all that, so a real small town. I graduated in 1986. I ended up uh, getting a career in law enforcement. I worked for the police department for a short time, and I actually ended up in the prison system where I became an investigator uh, for the Massachusetts Department of Correction. I was also in the National Guard. We got activated in 1991. I served in Operation Desert Storm, so the first Gulf War. We only did about six months over there, but it was brutal, absolutely brutal. Wow. Uh, so, you know, so much so that, it, you know, I made a decision that if I, <laughs> not if, but when I made it out of the desert, you know, I was going to chase my dream down, which was to be a published author. So it's taken me years, but I finally, you know, fulfilled that promise to myself. Wow. So we talked to you probably about six months ago, and mm -hmm. at that time you said, I'm working on my next book called The Changing Season. Tell us. So right. that's the new book that's out today. Um, tell yeah. us what that book is all about. Uh, the Changing Season is actually a coming-of-age book, which, you know, at this point in my career seems somewhat odd that I would write that, but it, the timing's perfect. I have a son and a daughter. Uh, my daughter just, you know, finished college. I have a son that has a semester left. You know, another boy in, uh, in high school, so we're talking about college for him. So it's really, <clears throat> it was the time to do it, right? So it's a coming-of-age book. Uh, really taking a look at this generation, which you know, I'm not trying to be insulting, but it's somewhat entitled uh, that hasn't really worked all that hard and has had a lot of things done for them. And, um, so I think the main character, his name is Billy Baker, and he graduates from high school in the beginning of the book, and the book ends actually him going off to college. So the whole thing takes place within the summer uh, before he goes off to college. And I put so many obstacles and challenges in front of him that he has no choice but to grow up, right? And uh, yeah. But I think the cool part of the book is I also give him a very, very good friend, his best friend, whose name is Jimmy, and it's actually a mutt who's about 14 years old in the book. Uh, so Jimmy's actually his confidant and, you know, the person that he talks to. So rather than doing all this internal dialogue, he's, you know, always talking to the dog so you have a sense of what's going on with him. Uh, but it was a lot of fun. Uh, I think, uh, <laughs> excuse me, the reviewers have really, really been kind. We've gotten some, some real acclaim for the book, and I think that it's, highly relatable so it doesn't matter whether you're young or old male female i think you'll really um be able to relate to this book right whether or not you're a dog lover or somebody who remembers you know having graduated from high school and not knowing what to do with their lives or somebody who's going through it now wow so basically your audience is anyone yes i would say well i'm probably like the high end of young adult all the way through like new adult contemporary and and, and beyond that 
Um, so the people who have read it so far, I mean, we're blessed. The book, the book's out today. We already have, I think it's over 60 reviews on Amazon, 50 of them are five stars. And, wow. Wow. Well, the people, I mean, the ages vary, the, the readership varies, which is fantastic. And that's really, you know, the intention of this book was to, to, to grow my audience, my readership, uh, but to really get something that's highly relatable to, to all audiences. So that right. that was going to be my next question. So when you wrote the book, you actually targeted it to be kind of aimed at everybody in general, not a specific segment. I did. I mean, you know, from, from a writer's perspective, you know, to put a dog in the book is a bit of a layup in a sense, right? I mean, it, mm-hmm. people have had a dog. Most people, you know, so I write 80% of this dog. The other 20% becomes the dog that you grew up with. So it's very easy as a writer to endear a character like that to the reader, right? So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> by putting the dog in the story, he actually helps to tell, you know, the story uh, as you go through it. But I think because of that, it, that that time and place, you know, most people when they they were graduating from high school were lost, right? And it's at a time where you have to make these major decisions and you're ill prepared to make them. Um, so I really wanted to capture that. So speaking of animals, I know that you are doing something with the ASPCA with this book. Yeah. Yeah, we are. We're actually giving a percentage of the profits and proceeds uh, to the ASPCA. that will be 50 cents per book, which is donated. Wow. Uh, fantastic. The dog in the book is a rescue dog. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, I can get on a, a pedestal with this thing or, or, you know, a soapbox and preach, but it really is about, you know, the unconditional love of an animal and how they, they can ground you, you know, as a person and kind of mm-hmm. center you. And, and that's what I did with it in this book. So wow. I think a lot of people have really attached themselves to it and, as I said, it's, you know, I hate to keep using the word relatable, but they can, you know, kind of see themselves in the story. Wow. So somebody like you, you have all of these novels that you get all kinds of acclaim for. I mean, just to have so many reviews on this one that's basically brand new, The Changing Season. Right. How long do you stay on that high for? Because it sounds like you're just already back writing the next book. Yeah, it's it's definitely a, I mean it's definitely a mix. It's funny like today being the release date, people would think that you know it's very climatic, and it's not. Mm-hmm. I mean this is it's a pleasure being on your show. I've done some other things today, but um, it's really about the work. I mean I really really enjoy writing, mm-hmm. right? And the marketing not so much, but it's you know it's it's necessary. I mean you need to get out there and connect with people. So you know I do a lot on social media and um, the prep work that goes into it. I mean I've been marketing this book for the last six six to eight weeks. Um, so to get onto another project is such a joy because it's what I love to do. I love to create characters and stories. So, <laughs> but it is—it's also thrilling, and it's—you know—I'm not gonna lie to you. I mean, it's you know when people can you know, come back to you and, and and you can stop this discussion. It's not about praise, but it's about having this dialogue with other people where they can kind of see where you were coming from, and you know they can connect to it and therefore connect to me, which is fantastic. Wow. So when did your first book come out? Um, well, I wrote under a pen name, Stephen Herbert's, which was a blessing because it took me a long time to really, you know, cut my teeth and learn how to write. So the first couple of books I wrote, I wrote under a pen name, Stephen Herbert's, and I'll be the first to say that, you know, they weren't the best books written. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, it, you know, it takes time. And really, I, I would say the first book that had any type of substance where I knew, you know, I, I you know, I at least had a shot at a career as a writer is um, a book called the, the Unexpected Storm, which was autobiographical, it was nonfiction, it was about the first Gulf War, and really it served as a catharsis for me, uh, you know, to help heal my soul from, from that brutal experience, so, and mm-hmm. that came out in, I think it was 2000. Wow, so you use writing to heal as well? Right, for yourself. absolutely. That's awesome. So, are, do, do you ever have days or weeks go by that you don't write at all, or no? Yes, oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it, takes me, it used to take me about nine, nine to ten months basically, to write a book. Now, because I've learned how to storyboard and I'm getting much more efficient you know, with the process, it takes me about six months you know, to get a, a first draft. And a first draft for me is really like 80% done, right? So then I start working with the copy editor, and you know, we, we go back and forth, and there's a lot of give and take. Um, but, <laughs> excuse me, so I write, you know, in the last five years, I've been putting, putting, putting out one a year, which is somewhat insane, mm-hmm. but... Um, you know, the business model has called for it. It's the time for me to really put the, 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 the work in, you know, as I start to gather a readership. So, you know, it, it takes me about six months to write the book. 
I then take several months off. I start doing some research on the next book, which is just as fun. Mm -hmm. And then the writing begins again. Do you have a favorite book that you've done? <laughs> you know, the answer, the, the, the real answer is always the next book, right? But yes. um, I love The Changing Season, and I love another book I wrote called The Rock and Chair. Um, and really because it was based on, the main character was based on my grandfather, mm -hmm. who's been for 30 years. But it was, you know what I mean? I was so, so, so attached to that character. Wow. And what about the book you're working on now? What is that about? It's called Ashes, and I wanted to capture, you know, another point in time. My brother uh, works for NASCAR, and he was up, you know, this past summer. Um, I'm, I'm sorry. He was actually up over a, a Christmas break, and, uh, you know, we're both entering middle age, so it's funny how, the you know, the kids are getting older. The careers are kind of set. I mean, I'm gonna, you know, we're not looking at the sunset yet, but it's, you know, it's very different, the conversation about doctor's visits and all sorts of stuff. So I wanted to capture, you know, unlike this coming-of-age book, I wanted to capture middle age. So I have these two brothers that travel across the country uh, from Salem to Seattle uh, with their father's ashes, and they can't stand each other. They absolutely hate each other. And wow. the only thing they share in common is that they hated their father more. Wow. So it's just it some comedy and, you know, just really true-to-life type relationships. That's awesome. And I know, just because I know I follow you on Facebook for the changing season, do all of your books take place in New England? Yeah, they do now. You know, it's funny. I wrote The Rockin' Chair, and it took place in Montana. But, Stacey, honestly, I, it was like, I don't want to say it's a waste of time, but I spent so much time researching mm -hmm. Montana dairy farming and flying pigeons that, you know, I became an expert at that stuff. Rather than, you know, just place the book here, we already know about it. I mean, I already yeah. know about the weather and, you know, vegetation and you don't have to do too much research. So everything from here on will, will take place in the Yes, because I know I follow you on Facebook, and I see that you put on – Last week, I think, you put some pictures of places that yeah, you right. have featured in the book that are real places throughout New England. Yeah, and I think people get a kick out of it to have that local flavor. Yes. I, you know, it doesn't matter to somebody who's reading the book in Nevada or Sweden, but for folks here, it's, it's funny that you can start to gain momentum and really get some interest and some support behind you when a book is released. Uh, but for me, it's just a lot of fun. I mean, if I'm putting somebody in a pizza shop, I might as well put them in you know, pizza shop I hang out with, you know, hang out with that. That's know, awesome. Kid. Stephen mm. King does that. Like, all of his are in Maine and in, around where right. he lives. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's fine. It's like, it's actually like giving somebody a wink. I mean, I was contacted last week from, basically, it's a breakfast diner. And mm -hmm. the guy asked if I wanted to do a book signing in there. And it's, you know, it'd be crazy to say no. So, obviously, I said yes. But it would probably be one of the best book signings I've, I've ever had because. Yes going to come out for it right and the, the guy's thrilled because his place is in the book yes maybe your next coming of age story it could be about people who buy houses using ross mortgage <laughs> and lair <laughs> absolutely nice why not <laughs> nice. it's a thought right <laughs> yeah. um yeah. my curiosity is do you read a lot i do i read a lot when i'm not writing okay and i mean by that is like i'll be teaching next week and you know i'm I'm finishing up uh, another edit for, for Ashes, and then I'm going to take some time off, and I'll do a lot of reading uh, because I love to read, and <laughs> I need to increase my vocabulary. It's funny. The older I get and the more I write, the slower I read because I love the way people put, you know, yes. the words together, right? And um, but when I'm writing, you know, and I tell young writers that you really have to watch out because, you know, you'll be until the middle of the book reading the book, and then at night you're writing something. And then you read it back to yourself, and it seems somewhat familiar, right? So mm -hmm. it's easy to become impressionable. Yes. By what you're doing. So I take time off while I'm writing. Wow. But I do, I do love to read. All right. So where can people buy The Changing Season? Uh, the best place to go is really either barnesandnoble.com or amazon.com. The book is available in hard, co you know, hard cover. Uh, you can get it um, in digital copy, so something for your Nook or your Kindle. Mm -hmm. And it's also available tomorrow in audio. Oh, wow. And who reads the audio? Is it you? No, it's actually, uh, I think it's audible.com mm -hmm. that we, uh, has the contract for it. And at first, I'll tell you about it. I wanted to do them, but yeah. I don't know if you've ever seen that process. Like, you know, I, <laughs> I, would, I wouldn't, because they send me, you know, these, these different clips, and I'll come back and say, oh, you know, you need to pronounce this differently. But the real, real tedious process. But they use uh, you know, professional voice actors, which I appreciate. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So you're, not, so you're not saddled with doing it you're on your own? No, I wouldn't. You know, like I said, at first, I, I really thought it would be a thrill to do that. 
but it's more of a thrill to hear somebody else, you know, read your, your words back to you, yes. which is kind of cool. Yeah. All right. Any upcoming book signings in the coming weeks in the Boston area that people should check out? No, I'm actually I'm going to be um, working on putting some of that stuff together, and I will have it on my website, which okay. is stevenmanchester.com. Okay. And folks can also connect with me on Twitter. Um, as well as uh, Facebook. Probably the best place is Facebook. If you know, if you send me a note, my turnaround time is usually about four minutes. So um, if you do want to connect. But I will be posting, you know, all the events and appearances as, as we go along. Okay, awesome. And are those opportunities where people can get the changing season and also potentially some of your other books? If you, Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll make sure, you know, stuff's available. I mean, if it's, if I'm coming up to an event, um, you know, normally the bookstore will, will order, you know, my backlist gotcha. as well. Okay, awesome. Stephen Manchester and the changing season, and you can visit him at yeah. stephenmanchester.com or find him on Facebook or Twitter. Great. Thanks for being on the show with us again, Steve. Thanks. It was great having you. Thanks. Thank you both. I really appreciate it. You're very welcome. And that's going to do it for this edition of Get Real. Make sure you join us again next weekend for more.